Conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum simply states that the momentum of a system remains the same despite any collisions or interactions that occur within that system. The overall momentum will continue to remain the same. Okay, so let's just review what momentum is. Momentum is again a mass times a velocity. All right, so a mass typically is in kilograms, a velocity meters per second. All right, so you've all observed this uh, if you've ever watched uh, balls on a on a pool table, right? If I've got a ball and it's moving at a certain momentum and it strikes another ball, this ball will continue at the same momentum. Since the balls have the same mass, it'll also continue at the same velocity. Okay? Uh, if I have a ball moving at a certain momentum in this direction and it strikes a ball moving at the, with an mo opposite momentum together, those two balls are going to collide and they're going to bounce off each other, right? So our, this ball is now moving this way, this ball is now moving this way. But again, the momentum of this ball is continuing. It's just now being observed in this ball. The momentum of this ball is continuing. It's now being observed in this ball. So again, these are both examples of conservation of momentum. Let's look at some examples that you might be asked to solve and demonstrating conservation of momentum. Let's say I've got a cannon and I'm firing a cannonball at 25 meters per second and my cannonball has a mass of 5 kilograms. Okay? If I solve this problem, what I need to figure out is my initial momentum must equal my final momentum. But my final momentum is going to now have two different momentums. It's going to have the momentum of the ball, which we'll call momentum B, and the momentum of the cannon, which we'll call momentum C. All right. Well, what we want to figure out here is what, after this ball is fired, what is going to be the velocity of that cannon in that direction. So when we start, our initial momentum is going to be essentially zero kilograms per meter squared because we have zero velocity. Okay? That's going to equal the momentum of the ball, which is 25 kilograms times, I'm sorry, 5 kilograms times 25, I got my units mixed up, meters per second. Okay. And that is also, again, conservation means I also have to add the cannon, which is 100 kilograms times V, because what we're trying to solve for is what is the velocity of the cannon. All right, so V is our unknown here. And if we simplify this, we have 5 times 25 is 125 kilograms per meter squared plus 100 kilograms times V. Okay, I'm going to divide by 100 kilograms. And when I do that, my units cancel, and I'm going to get V is going to equal negative 125 meters per second. Okay, because if I have a positive velocity here, I have to have a negative velocity to equal out. So in this case, this velocity is going to be negative 1.25 meters per second. Okay? Let's look at a second example. This time we're going to look at what's called an inelastic collision. In this case, I've got a Velcro ball of one kilogram. It's going to go four meters per second, and it's going to collide with a big Velcro ball of five kilograms. Now when they collide, I have no initial velocity here, or no zero, zero momentum here, but when they collide, the new system is going to have a certain velocity. And oops, what is that new velocity going to be? All right. Well, let's look at that. All right. So what we have here is an initial momentum, and it has to equal the final momentum. All right. So my initial momentum is made up of two components, this ball and this ball, and the momentum of each. So let's calculate that. I've got one kilogram times four meters per second for that one. And I'm going to add that to five kilograms. And my velocity here is zero meters per second. Okay? So this unit is zero. We can forget about it. So our initial momentum is just four kilograms meters per second, all right? And that's going to equal, 
our final velocity, now these two are one. So our unit is now has a mass of one plus five, which is six kilograms. And we need to figure out what the velocity is. We're solving for V there, okay? So how do we solve that? Well, we've got to divide four by six kilograms to get rid of our unit there. And when we do that, that cancels and we get V equals 0.66 meters per second, okay? So in this case, we use the conservation of momentum to figure out what the velocity of our new system is after a smaller system with a smaller momentum has collided with a larger object and we've calculated the new velocity. So these are two of the types of problems you'll be asked to solve using the conservation of momentum.